Makes it really easy to read. It has clickable links too. It takes a, takes a long time. Um, all right, here we go. I'm gonna get my clock on my thing. All right. Um, this meeting is called to order. Um, my name is Sarah Clendenning, president of Lincoln Heights Neighborhood Council of Los Angeles, California. We have 20, well, 25 seats on our board. Um, yes, yeah, Thursday, March 17th, 6.04 p.m., St. Patrick's Day. Um, Madam Secretary, roll call, please. Sarah Clendenning. Present. Ben Watsworth. Present. Vincent Chente Montalvo. Present. Fernanda Sanchez, present. Nancy Soto. Present. Benny Madera. Present. Didia Delizer. Present. Joanna Iraeta. Present. Diana Tran. Present. Annalie Har. Melanie Bolomo Shiflet. Here. Diego Zapata. Here. Richard Ortiz. Presente. Gil Arevalo. Here. Steve Lucero. Here. Present. Hey, Steve. Lina Ortega. Present. Esmeralda Landeros. Present. We have quorum. Bravo. Um, we have quorum. We have how many exactly, Fernanda? We have 16. And who was missing? Anna Lee and who else? It was just Anna Lee. Really? So we only have 17 board members total? Oh, OK. Um, OK, good to know. Um, all right, so now we're going to move on to item number three. I mean, oh, wait, three, yeah. Non-agenda public comment, two minutes per person. Now, this is the part of the agenda where anybody from the community can speak for two minutes. Uh, it has to be about something that's not on the agenda. So it could be about anything in the world, not on the agenda. Uh, press star nine or raise your hand to speak right now. Uh, before before we go there, uh, Deanna has her hand up. What's up? Oh, uh, no, uh, I just wanted to, uh, oh, one second. Uh, point, point of inquiry? Uh, sorry, uh, so I wanted to, I don't know if I should say it now, if I should say it later, but it's about the thing that I talked about before the recording started. I just wanted to say oh, it on no, record. That, yeah, we shouldn't, um, yeah, if it's, a, yeah, uh, I'm going in my parliamentary procedure brain right mm -hmm. now. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, okay, so this is the time for the community to speak. Oh, so my bad, my bad. We're not, allow we're not allowed to interrupt the people. Um, okay. Yeah, uh, so please, uh, community members, yeah, press star nine or raise your hand. Just talk about whatever's on your mind, whatever you want us to know, please. Okay, we have uh, Carolyn. I'm gonna unmute you if you can please state your name for the record. Hi, this is Carolyn G. Young Park. Hey. Chair. Hello. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you. Anytime oh, yes. you're ready. Yeah, go for oh. it. Oh, okay, great. Thank you. Uh, this is um, Carolyn G. Young Park. You may know me by G. Young. I am on the Silver Lake Neighborhood Council um, at large governing board member. I um, am running for judge of the Superior Court office number 118. I'm running with three other women uh, attorneys who are on the slate. We, our slate is called the Defenders of Justice. Um, and that's because my three slate members are public defenders. Um, we work closely with the people who are most system impacted by our current legal system. And we think that because of that, uh, we should be elected as judges. Currently, uh, prosecutors and corporate lawyers are overrepresented on the bench. And if you look at the 27 appointees of um, uh, Governor Newsom, you'll see 
that that's true. Um, it, there are a lot of uh, big law firm attorneys and prosecutors. Um, so my slate mates are Holly Hancock, who ran before um, and was came pretty close, Elizabeth Lashley Haynes, and Anna Retano. Um, and we uh, humbly and respectfully ask for your vote in the June 7th primaries. Thank you. Thank you, Carolyn. Hey, Carolyn. All right. Okay, cool. Um, any other community members uh, like to speak? Press star nine or raise your hand. You have two minutes. Uh, we have none. All right. So with that, we will move on to item number four, uh, community and board announcements. So I guess we'll start with uh, board announcements first, and then we'll go to community. So if it's anybody from the board who has an announcement, you have, you have 25 minutes to speak. No, you have two, you have two minutes to make your announcement. Um, yeah, so. Okay. Our first one is Diego. Diego? Uh, I'm pretty sure I have to do this now, um, but I just wanted to announce that I will be recusing myself from item 8B, uh, just uh, on the grounds that I work pretty closely with uh, Legacy LA and I don't want to have a biased vote. Um, that is all. Thank you, Diego. Just uh, just that point, as soon as the, before the item comes on, just mute yourself and turn your screen off. Okay. And then we'll, yeah. we'll make a note. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's that's important. You have to turn it, turn it, totally disconnect. Um, thank you for uh, doing that. Um, all right. Uh, any Fernanda. other? Board? Just want to announce that the housing is key deadline is March thirty first. That's for any rental assistance and utility bill assistance. The mayor's office is also holding a housing clinic uh, this Saturday, March. 19th, 10 to 4 at the Youth Center on Altura Street. Um, if you register online, they'll go ahead and help you with applying for the Housing is Key rent relief application. All Thank right. you, Fernanda. Mm -hmm. Deanna? Hello. So uh, I said this before the recording started, but so uh, a couple of days ago, I emailed the library about asking for flyers in multiple languages at, for the for their internship. And so the, I got a response back saying that they had, um, they have received enough applications for the program and the diversity and inclusion and apprenticeship application is now closed. All right. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if I could comment on that with my comment, but yeah, I received an email from the city saying they had this diversity and inclusion high school program uh, job, sort of intern paid internship or something. Can we get the word out? There's only weak time, but the only flyer, they, the flyer was only in English. So I said, hey, uh, can, we get, can we get them in Chinese and Spanish and Vietnamese? <clears throat> yeah. But I guess, uh, you know, that, yeah, whatever. Didn't happen. Thank you for looking into that, Diana. Um, cool. Let me see, announcements. We have, uh, I don't see any more hands up for the announcements. Oh, right. uh, we're going to move on to public announcements. There's anybody from the public? No, we, we did public, we're on item number four now. Government. No, we, did, we didn't go to public announcements. We did public. Oh, public announcements, sorry about that. Yeah, I switched it up. So uh, yeah, public announcements. No. Mm -hmm. Star nine or raise your hand. Public. I don't forward. see any. All right, so we're going to move on to item number five, government reports. If there's any um, government, if there are any government officials or city officials or city employees who would like to uh, address the board and the community, you have two minutes to speak. Uh, please raise your hand or press star nine so we can. You know, I don't, uh, Jose. Oh, Jose. Second. Yeah. Uh, hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Jose Gavinez with the Department of New York Department. Uh, just a uh, update for, for the board. Uh, so for Thursday, 30, uh, March 31st, uh, from 6 to 9, we're going to be having the, uh, the Community Impact uh, Statements uh, Workshop. The, uh, just emailed to, to the board today. Uh, the, the registration link is, is it's finally live, so I was able to share that with the board. 
Uh, again, if any board members are interested in attending, please uh, go ahead and make sure to register. Uh, the, the workshop will be recorded and it'll be uh, provided again in, in the future in the website once it becomes available, uh, just like we did with the parliamentarian legislative uh, workshop as well. Uh, so so that, that recording is also available on empowerly.org if you go to workshops and trainings uh, page on the navigation board, uh, you'll be able to see those, those um, video recordings and the documents that are uh, provided as well. Um, also, just a note as well for the Zoom, NC Zoom licenses. Uh, so the department uh, is asked, will recommend it for the neighbor councils to budget uh, the future board meeting in order to have the expenditure for the NC Zoom licenses. Uh, since uh, the department's not going to be paying for all the neighbor councils licenses uh, at the end of uh, April. So, uh, if, if neighbor councils would like to uh, continue to have the Zoom license under the probably account, please make sure to make the expenditure. Uh, the department's still trying to sort out how it will all work out in order to pay it under that one account. Uh, but also this gives uh, the opportunity for neighbor councils to also purchase uh, additional licenses uh, to uh, that other neighbor councils have been trying to get to. And it's been a challenge for, for the department in, in trying to figure that sort out and trying to split those, those costs. Uh, but that that's, uh, was part of also the monthly profile report that was sent out at the beginning of the month. I also sent out the monthly announcement as well. Uh, and providing the information there. Thank you, Jose. Yeah, uh, Jose, can you tell me real quick? So, so we received a, a, a memo from the city or from Dunn saying they're going to do ADA inspection on, uh, you know, future oh. meeting sites. Yeah, um, yeah. So, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> so, um, sorry, I hear noise in the background. Vince, can you mute who's ever got the radio, radio going? So, um, Jose. Uh, so you're saying that, yeah, are we uh, required on a certain date to begin doing the in-person meetings again? Has that date been selected? Uh, no, no. So in regards to in-person, I uh, this there, there hasn't been any announcements on that uh, yet uh, that I'm aware of. Uh, it's still virtual. It's just that with the Zoom license, it's, it's uh, the department has, uh, I think, uh, been paying for that under its budget. Uh, so now it, I think it's just gonna have it for the neighbor councils uh, to be able to pay for, for the Zoom license for, for the year uh, so that it, they're able to maintain and also they can add additional license under the, the Imperley account, which would be the, the like under the enterprise uh, uh, features that, that it includes as well. So that's like the limited storage, the webinars, all that stuff. Uh, uh, I, I, all the, the features under the enterprise uh, will still be available to the neighbor councils. Um, it's just that now it's being diverted to, to the NCs to uh, budget for, for, for that expense. Okay, cool. Um, uh, and also in regards to the ADA uh, that, that you just briefly mentioned, uh, that, that's uh, the ADA assessments for uh, locations. Uh, it, it was something that we, the department has sent out back in the end of summer, the beginning towards the fall, uh, asking neighbor councils to provide the, the locations where the neighbor council will typically meet. So that'll be the, the board meeting uh, uh, facility or, or location that, that it will go to and where your typical committee meetings will, would hold their meetings as well. Uh, since sometimes it might not be necessarily the same location as you, you hold your, your uh, board meetings. Uh, so that was something that was just asked to, to neighbor councils. If you have not gotten uh, or, or if that was not submitted back in uh, that time, uh, you can still make the, the, the submission. Uh, I can forward you the, the, the link to the form so that you can pr uh, provide a contact person from the neighbor council and then just provide the list of locations or possible locations where the neighbor council would typically hold their meetings. That way, the Department of Disability can go out and do the inspection, the ADA inspections for those sites, and would make it easier to streamline the process for any of the lease agreements that they need to be done in the future. I have a question. Yeah. So, uh, 
the site where we were having our meetings before has been closed for the past two years, the Lincoln Heights Senior Center. Mm -hmm. Is it a given, like all city properties legally should be ADA compliant, right? So if we choose a city property or, you know, are negotiating some lease and it's not ADA compliant, is, is it the city's responsibility to get it up to code or what? Uh, I don't know the answer to that, but I, I can uh, check back on that and see if, uh, if that's something that's on the city to make those uh, arrangements to, to fix to make sure it's up to the ADA code. Okay, cool. Thank you, Jose. No problem. Um, okay, so any other uh, governor, government officials on the line? I don't see any. All right, so we're gonna move on to the next item. Um, well, this could be brief. Area reports. All the area reps, if you just want to say what, you know, who you are, what area you represent, or what's going on in your zone, uh, just give a little short report here. Area one is not here. Annalie's not here. So we can start with area two. Hi, I'm Melanie Palomo, your area two rep. Um, the only thing right now that I wanted to bring up for area two is that since things have been opening back up and more people out on the roads, we have been noticing like an increase in um, traffic accidents um, and just speeding and especially in our area along Griffin. Um, so that's something that I'm going to be looking into maybe creating some safer passage for our pedestrians. But I think that's that's the one thing that everyone's kind of dealing with right now. But that's all I got, thanks. Thank you, Mel. Okay, so uh, next would be, uh, so we have another vacancy if you're in area two. Uh, we have our area, skip area three, uh, it's area four rep, that's Diego. That's um, the area down near Hazard Park. Hey everyone, yes, uh, my name is Diego Zapata. Uh, I'm area four, uh, which is the area in Hazard Park, Bravo, USC, tech, that area. Uh, I have nothing to report thus far, except that we are still looking for an area four resident representative. It's been empty for quite a while. So if you know anyone who lives in that area, please encourage them to apply because uh, I desperately would like another area rep for this part of Lincoln Heights. <laughs> you know anybody who lives on Playground Street? Charlotte, Zonal, Chicago, or Workman, hit them up. Tell them to join the council. <laughs> All right, area five rep, uh, Gil. Yes, how are you doing tonight? Hey. Okay, uh, I did want to report that I'm noticing uh, some uh, sidewalk and driveway improvements going along Main Street. Uh, so it's a, uh, it's a, they have a lot of the problems with the, the street, the sidewalks and everything else like that. So I, I'm glad to see that they're coming, they're working their way up from uh, daily on up. Uh, they uh, have about three locations that they've been working on. And I guess they're going to put a new, new telephone pole on, on Johnson Street. So I'm trying to find out when that's going to be. Now, I, I received a, an email on the, before the last meeting regarding street lights uh, from Jose Rodriguez and... Uh, he was saying in that that they were replacing uh, the lights or you know, taking care of the ones that are out on daily. Uh, I haven't looked at that yet, but uh, is there any more uh, okay. information regarding the, tele uh, the, the street lights on, uh, on Broadway? I'm going to go and take a tally tonight. Um, I'm, I'm gonna go and look around, but uh, yeah. Thank you for uh, checking out the action on Maine. Um, cool. All right, and then uh, next we'll move on to Richard Ortiz, our Area 5 uh, resident representative. Hello, hello. Nothing much to report. I did remember a thing that's been occurring for quite a while. On the corner of Avenue 24 and Manitou, I believe, there's this sidewalk corner that if you take it too quick, it's an automatic flat tire. Oh, really? Yeah, it's, it's, it's been plaguing us for years. Well, let's, let's get it. Uh, Man, yeah. oh, yes. wow, it's tense. Well, thank you. I forgot. <laughs> for sure. Just, there's so many little things. It's like, yeah. I just, exactly. 
Amen. Yeah, I keep it <laughs> record it into my phone so I have these great uh, recordings of me, you know, talking to myself. Sure. That's all I got to report. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. Okay, so we'll move on to uh, Steve Lucero, Area Six Rep. That's down near the down at the brewery or Lanza Brewery. Yes, yeah, so hello there, Steve Lucero. Uh, reporting <laughs> from the brewery. Uh, big news on, on my end here, there was a shooting across the street from uh, our home on Moulton Avenue, North Main, uh, last week. Uh, no further reports on that, but that was the biggest thing that's happened in the last few months. Um, outside of that, the encampment uh, on Moulton has been growing a little larger, and what I mean by that is the, the west side of Moulton is almost reaching North Main Street. Um, before then, it's been relatively tame. Um, otherwise, nothing else to report at the moment. Yeah, Moulton wasn't on that uh, anti-RV camping motion of, of Cedillo. So uh, yeah, uh, people try to just go where they can, can live, be un, un, unmolested uh, by authorities. Okay, uh, thank you, Steve. Um, so we're gonna move to, uh, our, uh, do we have another area six? Now? Area seven. Yeah, area seven. That is Selena Ortega. Hi, everyone. I'm Selena Ortega, um, area seven at large representative. The only thing I would have to, and, and actually, this isn't area seven, it's more of um, um, Steve's area. The, the shooting is really the, the only thing that's taken place around here. Other than that, there's been a lot, I think because of that shooting, there's been a lot of um, like um, LAPD patrolling in the evenings, um, rather aggressive, but um, preventative measures, I guess, but that's about it. Selena, what did the LAPD say? What did Hollenbeck say on the Area 7 meeting to you? They said that they only had one car for Lincoln Heights, right? They did, yeah. So that, that's why there was a lack of patrolling at the time because they only had one unit available and sometimes yeah. that unit was busy doing other things. Yeah, so uh, yeah, we, they said that we are we are underserved. Um, but that's right. about it, yeah, around here. Sarah, right. I just want to make one announcement to the, um, the members of the area reps. I sent this out to a couple and I just, I'll send it out to all the reps. I created this simple document that we can print out and put out in the public. And it's just a, a brief, like this one was designed for Area 7. So it has like Selena Ortega, Esmeralda Ramos to be our members, right? Uh, that are our area reps. But it gives the public just a little bit of what they can contact them with, like graffiti, pet resources, film permit. So if anybody wants some of these to put up, I can customize them to put it in your area just email me and I'll get these out to Selena so we can start posting some up in our areas to see if the public will come out and maybe they'll have more issues with it. And these little things you can, I'll cut them for you. They're just little tablets that they can pull out and take home with their email address so they don't have to write anything down. Maybe in the future we can get a, a skew, a skew uh, on it so it goes directly to your guy's email. That's all I have. Put your phone number on there, that's what I would do. I had told um, Chente that I was going to help him translate that, but I wanted to run it by Esmeralda first. So if I could have her contact by the end of the meeting so that we could kind of um, powwow regarding that. Sure. Yeah. Okay. And then Esmeralda, our Area 7 uh, at large, right? Oh, no. oh, wait. Is she a resident? Hi. <laughs> um, hey. um, in the area, like by the Goodwill, that that public building was there was an attempted robbery there yesterday. Mm. I don't know what though, what they would try to rob that area. I don't think there was money, but um, that's all. Um, I have heard something about a gunshot and a couple of robberies in the area, just based on like the citizen app and hearing a lot more sirens passing by the past couple of days on, um, in the area by the the 110 freeway at the roundabout. Yeah, Avenue 19. Yeah. yeah. Hey, have you been on Avenue? You know, I was there a couple, couple weeks ago and all of it, it's all burned under the bridge. All the stuff's burned. There's all, so much illegal dumping. Is it still like 
did you have you seen under that bridge lately? Is it? I have yeah. Can do you think as area? Can you go and uh, not? Can Patron. you um, do your rounds and just take inventory of like? Yeah. Yeah. That pretty, uh, yeah. Um, for the people housed and unhoused, there's people coming from the outside dumping crap all in our neighborhood. Uh, all right. So we're going to move on to the next item. Uh, that would be committee announcements. Um, I'll speak first, I guess. I'm the chair of the Pluck Planning and Lighting Committee. Uh, Benny Madera is the co-chair. We had a meeting last night. Um, we had a couple um, items that are now on this agenda. Uh, yeah, busy committee. Um, we have five uh, community stakeholder seats, or four community stakeholder seats available. If anybody from the community wants to be active in the use of the land in Lincoln Heights, uh, yeah, come join our committee. Um, and next we will move on to the rules committee. Ben, uh, ben Wadsworth. Okay, the uh, bylaws and, and rules committee uh, met uh, two different times now and uh, have uh, submitted the, the uh, recommendations for changes to our bylaws and also for our standing rule, uh, which you'll see later on the agenda. It takes uh, 18 votes uh, to change the bylaws. And at this point, we don't have that number here. It only takes a, a simple majority to change things. Yeah, we, we need people. We have eight vacancies on our council right now. So, um, and any area rep that has the, you know, each area has two reps. If you, the other seat is open, please uh, spread the word in your area that, yeah, you need a partner. <laughs> um, cool. Thank you, Ben. Um, Executive committee, uh, do anybody from the executive committee have an announcement? I don't. And we don't really have much news in that committee. Um, Programs and services committee. Um, that would be Joanna. No, not at the moment. We're just still waiting to uh, hear back from the city about the tree um, giveaway and organizing an event. And so I'm still uh, in the process of finding out more. Okay, cool. Um, um, I have something from the um, committee, the oh, sorry, the outreach committee. I had a question about storage. Like, if we were to collect items, where can we store them? Ah, good question. Uh, now we, you're the co-chair of the programs and services, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we have a storage unit, but we still have to take inventory of it with the city because it's we. We're paying for some, a space that kind of doesn't, we don't know what's in there. It's kind of trash and stuff. So, um, but once we do that, then uh, there's space for, right Vince? Like the council can store. As items. long as it's, yeah, as long as it's like council stuff, we can store yeah. it in there, It'll, it's okay. And it's not, you know, it's over on Mission Road near that egg place or near the 10, I think. There's some storage place. <laughs> I'll let you know where it is. Um, cool. Uh, let's see, where are we, where are we at? Outreach. Uh, outreach. Uh, Nancy. Hi. Yep. Uh, no outreach updates yet. Um, but uh, but uh, I am uh, the uh, business rep, and I do believe we have two open oh. that we must fill yeah so just wanted to throw that out there thank you thank you nancy yeah and if you want to be involved in the outreach committee it's outreach and events you know yeah we have five uh public stakeholder seats that you can you can join um okay cool uh budget committee uh Vince? we have nothing in the budget committee all right. I just want to put out that we've gotten some board member requests to get certain items like projectors and things that we can use into the future. So we'll draft up a, a budget on it with some of the board members input to see if we can get some of those items put onto the agenda by next month. All right. 
Cool. Uh, and then the next one we'll move on to Tenants Rights Committee, uh, Fernanda Sanchez. Yeah, um, again, we're having the housing clinic this Saturday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. It's going to be at the parking lot of the Lincoln Heights Youth Center. The address for that is 2911 Altura Street um, by all the churches. Uh, to register online, you just have to go to Stay Housed um, March 19, or you can call at 323-238-5326. Um, I still do have some flyers left if anyone would like some to post up around their neighborhood or to hand out just shoot me an email uh, by the end of today and I'm more than happy to drop some off. Cool. All right, so we'll move on to Environmental Justice Committee. Vince Montalvo. So we don't we don't have anything new from the environment other than the change of our name. And I have to go to Diego for that one. Diego, what was our name? Because I have it written down somewhere. I don't know if it's correct on the agenda. I don't think it is. I, what? I thought it was um, uh, Yeah, I mean, it's fine. It's environmental justice and resilience, but yeah, it's just resilience. short. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. that, but I will say this, we, we also have room in our committee if you, for the public, if anybody is, is concerned with any environmental issues or want to see like environmental projects and we cover a whole lot from the river to your parks, to just your community. Uh, we will have our meeting on March the, the 23rd if you wanna attend. And if you guys have anything on the board or in the committee that would, you would like to see us bring up as an agenda item, you can email it to me or Diego and we'll be more than happy to put it on with any supporting documents you guys can provide. Thank you. Yeah, I just want everybody in Lincoln Heights to know, if you have something you want addressed, if you wanna get something resolved or have a discussion around it or ultimately bring it to the board for a vote, go to the committee that you know is applicable and then yeah, direct, direct action. Um, cool, so uh, Selena Ortega, government liaison. Um, I don't have any updates with um, city government liaison right now. Um, can I do elections while I'm at it? Yeah, go for it. Okay, so elections was supposed to have a meeting this past Saturday, but that was canceled like last minute. Mm -hmm. um, we couldn't really send anything out because it was canceled like, like right when the meeting was supposed to start. Um, but just so everybody knows, um, the primary elections for the LA city the LA City municipal elections are gonna take place June 7th. And then there's gonna be another set of elections in November. Um, but in the meantime, everybody can go register to vote at register to vote, it's one sentence, uh, .ca.gov. Um, you can also find out if you're already registered on that website. And also on that website, you'll be able to see um, how you can vote, like be it by mail or in person, um, they'll have that information on there. Um, so I just wanted to let everybody know. Yeah, you gotta check your registration. Uh, they, you know, you could be unregistered, they kind of knock you off. Yeah. You go to jail, you get uh, deregistered too. Just heads what? up. Uh, just one second, Diego has his hand up. Diego? I have a question for Selena, I'm not sure if she knows, but, um. One of the my, one of the community members uh, in our, my area approached me asking if um, if undocumented people can vote in municipal elections. Would you would you happen to know the response? Yeah, to that? unfortunately, because it's run by the state, it's they they're not eligible to vote for these elections. That was actually something that I found out while researching, uh, which I think is really unfortunate. But. You know, but if you're undocumented, you can. Um, register or um, apply at the stayhousela.org site and get the, the COVID rent relief going back 15 months. Oh so yeah, you do it. Uh, I did it. So yeah, everybody do it to, to be safe. Um, cool. Um, holiday committee, uh, that's Anna Lee. We have the LGBT community. Oh yeah, geez, my vision's horrible. Oh yeah, LGBT. TQ. Uh, Diana? Uh, 
Diana? Is that me? Yeah, sorry. I have not gotten like any information uh, like or, or any contact from the LGBT council at all. So yeah, I might have to reach out to them sometime this week because like it's been three months, three, four months without communication. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, cool. Uh, elections committee is Anna Lee. Uh, she's not here. Or not not elections, a uh, holiday. Um and so we'll skip that. And then next we have ARC, Alliance of River Communities. That's Vince. So ARC, ARC did not have uh, time to meet this month because there's so many issues on water quality and what's happening in the Alley River and also dealing with uh, DWP trying to steal the Alley River water to make us drink it. So there's, there's just so many things happening about water because of, of the crisis, right? That everyone's been reading about or hearing about. Um, so we're focusing on that right now. We will be having our next meeting on the same date and time. Um, it hasn't been set yet, but usually the first Tuesday of every month or second Tuesday. So, and again, it's open up to the public and um, we hope that people attend. You can also send items to us uh, so that we can uh, review it. Works the same way like a committee does. So if you have any concerns or anything that you think we should address, and the Alliance of the River is uh, 17 neighborhood councils. So you're co it's not just the, the Lincoln Heights. There's representative from 17 neighborhood councils there. So it's a good meeting to go and, and uh, a platform to use to get the message out. Thank you. Cool. You know, I, I think I'm going to make a quick uh, executive committee announcement. So, uh, you know, I don't know if the community knows, but we, we issue a lot of community impact statements. And these are uh, documents that go on the record with the city and they are in reference to motions by the council members that become law or ordinances. And we are given five, not five minutes, but you know, two minutes to speak at city council meetings. Um, so uh, it's a lot of uh, work and uh, we have five people uh, who are community impact statement qualified, whatever they've been, appointed to write. So um, we need people to write these things and and speak at the meetings. We need people to speak at the city council meetings, board members. So uh, if you like to speak <laughs> uh, on video in the, you know, whatever, city hall, hit me up. Um, so we'll move on to item 8A. See if our attendee is here, Valerie. Oh, there's Valerie. Valerie Sachs. Um, okay. okay. So, I, item eight A. Uh, I can't read the agenda now, but it's um, no. Valerie's going to present. Yeah. Discussion okay. and possible action on entitlement request. How so, long is our presentation going to be? I mean, this is kind of uh, just a sort of shorter. I think just like a two minute rundown of like what it is, you know, just with zoning. Um, okay. So the, it's, it's uh, yeah, uh, our motion is discussion and possible action on entitlement requests, letter to CPC city planning regarding Chipotle Mexican Grill, the restaurant that's already been built right now. Do um, I have to read the case numbers, Vince? Z, ZA 2021-10735 MPA is the main one. ENV 2021-10736 CE is the CEQA number. So the project description actions requested, it's a, they're requesting master plan approval for the sale and dispensing of beer and wine for on-site consumption in conjunction with the 2,353 square foot restaurant, 2,139 square foot interior and 214 square foot outdoor with 32 interior seats and 16 seats on the on-site outdoor patio. Hours of operation 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. daily at the ground floor of a five-story mixed-use building with hotel, conference center, and retail restaurant spaces pursuant to case number, is the big one, CPC 2015-376-MCUP ZV ZADSPR. Um, and the address is 2200 East Trojan Way slash 1550 North San Pablo Street. That's where the, that's at the Hyatt. And that's, um, uh, directly across from, uh, yeah, Lincoln Park there. So you would know where it is. Um, and so Valerie's, we, uh, gonna, Valerie's uh, gonna need um, access to the uh, share screen, right? Yeah, and we have all those uh, documents that uh, 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 correspond with those 
city planning numbers on our um, website under, under supplemental files on the agenda. So you can check them out. Um, and Valerie, yeah. One second, I'm just getting her. Um, so she has access to the share. Screen. Oh, and should I say, uh, we should change the share screen settings instead, which I can do instead of making people co host so that the meetings aren't ended um, like they were yesterday. Yeah. Um, Vince, so the pluck um, uh, recommendation do we announce that at the end or what? No, no, right now it's just okay. hearing it and then we'll do the final motion for the letter, whether it's to support or not support. And then we just motion and then uh, board member comment, public comment, and then okay. uh, we'll go to our vote. Cool. All right. So uh, Valerie. Yay. Hi, everybody. Um, I will keep it brief. I know you guys have a long agenda and there was there was a quite a lengthy discussion um, last night with the pluck committee. So, um, you know, we don't necessarily need to repeat the entire the entire thing. Um, but, and I also have with me on the line, Liliana Hernandez, she is called in. Um, so she doesn't show up here, but she's the manager of this location. So you may have questions for her and she can talk a little bit about, um, uh, I have to kind of text her at the side, um, but just so she can chime in or um, if she has anything to add or if there's specific questions regarding um, some of the policies and procedures or that location. But basically um, it's called a master plan approval because it's off of this master grant that had a whole bunch of other of those other uses. Um, and it basically approved in concept these various uses, including a restaurant um, at this location that, that Chipotle is now the person who is using that, um, the entitlement. Um, so it's it's already sort of approved in concept, but we need to go in regarding the specific operator, which is Chipotle. So Chipotle actually opened at this location about a month ago. Um, and this request is for them to be able to serve, it's, it's phrased as beer and wine because the ABC license type they're requesting is a type 41, which is beer and wine at a restaurant. Um, but as a practical matter, it will actually only be beer because they don't actually serve wine at any of their locations. So basically it's just a request for them to be able to serve beer um, for on-site on consumption um, within their existing restaurant, which is um, 2139 square feet interior and 214 square feet of outdoor space. Um, there will not be alcohol service in the patio because there aren't, uh, there's certain kinds of barriers that are required and it's not, that's not what they have here. So there's no alcohol outside. Um, and there'll be 32 interior seats, hours of operation, 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. daily. Um, so basically that's it. Um, that's what the request is. Uh, you know, I know you guys had some concern about alcohol in the neighborhood and so forth. Um, I would say that, um, you know, Chipotle is a really, really responsible operator. They have virtually no issues with any of their many, many locations. They have a lot of uh, systems and procedures in place to make sure that um, to make sure that that's the case. I probably represented Chipotle on like over a hundred of these, and a lot of them are repeats um, where we'll come back a few years later, and you know, sure enough, everybody's like, "There's no problem here," so you know, keep going. Um, Anyways, that's basically the idea. They never have happy hour. I, somebody mentioned, I don't, I don't know about something that might've happened in another state four years ago, but the California locations never have happy hour. Um, they never sell beer by the pitcher. Uh, they have security cameras in place throughout it, um, throughout the um, site to you know, monitor everything. And they have a lot of systems in place to make sure that these issues aren't any, a problem. It's also a very small percentage of gross receipts. People tend to not even know that they sell them. Um, and, um, you know, uh, they're, uh, <laughs> they're, I know it's not, I know you guys would love to have a local operator, but they're already there. Um, and, uh, you know, it is, they are a pretty community minded company. They do give back uh, to the local community. Like if you guys have events or something where you're looking for food donations and so forth, I know that that's something that they, they will do from time to time. Um, and um, you know they're hiring locally, and they do want to be a good community member. So that's that's the gist of it. Um, and uh, we're both available. I think she's on the line. Yeah, sure, she is. I see her. Okay. Yeah, Liliana, you're muted. But if you want to chime in at all, anything about your experience, or if you guys have questions, um, that's the gist of it. So 
And I understand the pluck, uh, well, Sarah can talk about what the pluck uh, vote was. I don't know that anything's gonna change this evening, but you know, we wanted to make ourselves available anyway and present. Well, yeah. Um, so do you, um, do, do you do you want me to pull up the uh, file of all the, you know, I have the supplemental file with your uh, PDF. Uh, Vince, can you pull up the, uh, the- Yeah, I have it open if you, cause I'm doing the shared screen. So if you wanna do that, so basically, do you want to see the plans? What would be of most interest? Like where it is in proximity to like Lincoln Park or like, you know, San Pablo Street, like that's where the tracks are. Like just so they can figure out like where it is. Yeah, this is um, this is the map from Zemus. Um, so it's in here. Um, and then let me see, There, there is a, sorry, this is probably dizzying to look at, but there is a- uh, There's no visual currently. I'm not seeing anything. Oh, okay. Well, then it won't be dizzy, making you dizzy. Um, let me try. Oh, I have to share the screen. I have to. There we go. Okay. All right. Can you guys see now? Okay. So basically, the Chipotle is here at the corner of. Can you guys see it? Yes. Okay, so it's at the corner of um, San Pablo and Alcazar right there. It's within this, this bigger project. So um, it's kind of hard to see that. This is the, another one. This is the restaurant itself. So um, there's a few seats in the corridor, um, but here's the interior seats. So basically people can come in and they, they go down the food line here and they order. Um, one of the things that Chipotle does in designing their restaurants is that the, the food line has a clear view of the dining room so that you know they're also kind of monitoring it while they're doing that. And let's see if I can make this bigger. Okay, so there's, sorry, it's should be, pivoted. Um, so there's no alcoholic beverage outlets between 600 and 1,000 feet of the site. Maybe these ones are not quite in order. Um, here's a sky view of it. We're on the location. So I'm not seeing, usually it's in, oh, here we go. So within 600 feet, this is what the, um, the uses are within 600 feet. And yeah, so there's only one other alcoholic beverage outlet within 600 feet. Um, and then there's a few others in the census tract. So is that. All right. Thank you, Valerie. Hey, Vince, could you pull up the supporting documents? I just want to show something from yesterday. Do you want me to stop share? Oh, oh no, no, no. Uh, sorry, I was confused. Yeah, no, no. It's already. Let me see. Give me one second. Sorry, I, I shouldn't. Have, yeah, I was. Yeah, if you can stop share because I got to get my screen. Uh huh. Sure. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Oh yeah, it's that first one with the picture on it. Yeah, that one. So yeah, Valerie, that's the site in, um, I believe it's either the 20s or the 50s. I think it's 1950. So that's um, San Pablo uh, Valley. Uh, there was a street called Henry Street, Lambie. Um, yeah, so, uh, Vince, can you just kind of scroll so that, yeah, so yeah, it was a residential, yeah, so there's East Lake, San Pablo, Big E Street, in Norfolk, so those are all houses, um, yeah, just that, it's pretty cool to see these maps, um, and that's General Hospital, the uh, coroner, and the old uh, county hospital, so, uh, yeah, uh, it hasn't always been industrial, an industrial area, I would say. But um, 
something to consider, but uh, pretty amazing to see these images. Um, yeah, and I just wanted to share those. So um, I guess, yeah, so we'll move on to, I guess, uh, board member discussion, right? So, uh, or should I talk about, should, should a pluck member talk about the well, recommendation? We, well, no, I mean, we could, if, if the board, I would say make a motion and then allow board members to, you know, ask questions if they have any questions on the project itself. So someone has to make a motion whether to support it or not support it. And then there has to be a second. Doesn't then, general board need to know the recommendation of the committee first? Yeah, we can give a small report. And then, yeah, before they make the motion or? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Fernanda, do you want to, so does any uh, Pluck member want to um, kind of give just a short report about like what was discussed yesterday? Sure. So yesterday the Pluck committee decided to oppose um, the request. Uh, there were a couple of community members that voiced their opinion and concerns in regards to having alcohol to such close parameters to the school and the hospital and the children's care center um, as well. Um, and people brought up the concern of just, you know, corporate entities being in the community. Um, and so the Pluck Committee voted against this measure. Thank you, Fernanda. Um, so uh, board member discussion. So with that, I'm gonna make a motion. Yeah, yeah we have to make a motion first. So with yeah. that, I'll make a motion to oppose the Chipotle Mexican Grill project uh, for the alcohol. Is there a second? I second. Okay, there's a second now. Uh, Sarah, board comment and then public comment, or board member questions that they have. Any. Yeah, uh, board members. Yeah, do you want to um, ask any questions or uh, uh, Valerie or um, make a statement or anything? Uh, you don't have to raise your hand, I guess, right, Ben? Yeah, if they raise their hand, I mean, I could. It's better so we could see who's in line, but. All right. right. It would be helpful to please raise your hand so that no one's talking over each other. Yeah, I guess you're right. Okay, I don't see any. Okay, so I, we'll move on to public comment. Is there anybody from the public who wants to talk about this or discuss a point, make a point? Press star nine or raise your hand. I don't see anybody in the public. Okay, with that, uh, we will move to a vote, right, Vince? Correct. Okay, so uh, we have a first and a second. Um, so the motion is to oppose the entitlement for the project, but then also we're going to write a letter that goes along with that to a determination that goes to the zoning zoning commit zoning administrator. Um, so that's the motion. Motion. So so to oppose, you say yes, and to approve it, you say no. Right, Vince. Correct. Okay. Okay. Um, so if there's no further board member comments, I'll go ahead and take this for a vote. Sarah Clendenning. So yes to oppose the entitlement. So again, a yes vote is to oppose and a no vote is for support. Ben Wadsworth. Yes. Vincent Montalvo? Yes. Fernanda, yes. Nancy Soto? Yes. Benny Madera? Yes. Didia Delizer? Yes. Joanna Iraeta? Yes. Diana Tran. Yes. Melanie. Yes. Oh, uh, sorry. I thought you couldn't hear me. No, that's fine. Melanie. Yes. Diego. Yes. Richard. Come on. Gil. No. Steve. Yes. Selena. Yes. 
Esmeralda? Yes. All right, uh, 15 yes, one no, motion carries. Motion thank carries. you. Uh, thank you, Valerie, for presenting. Okay. Thank you, guys. Have a good evening. Good evening. All right, so we will move on now to item 8B, and it's right across the street. Uh, discussion and possible action on letter regarding. Right, before, before we start this, um, yeah. Diego, if you can uh, turn your mic oh. up and your video off, please. Mm, sorry. <laughs> so let's yeah. let the record reflect that uh, before discussing the item that Diego has recused himself. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can begin. Okay, I, yeah, I don't see Jacqueline on the attendee side. So uh, Jacqueline uh, was the person who presented last night on this project. She grew up in Ramona Gardens and now works at Legacy LA. Uh, doing outreach on this project, which I'm going to talk about, or we will talk about. Um, B, discussion of possible action on letter regarding natural park at Ramona Gardens housing development, anti-pollution green buffer between Ramona Gardens and the 10 freeway, presentation by Legacy LA and Ramona Gardens residents, or residents in Hazard Park area. Uh, and then these are the people responsible for the project. Uh, project conceived by Community Conservation Solutions, CCS, with partner team, Legacy LA, who did community engagement, SWA, the landscape architects, VS2 is engineering, and land IQ is restoration. Um, do we have a mo motion, I guess? Any motion? So there, we're not gonna have no, is there any like documentation we can show them? Yeah, so uh, I have, if you go to the supplementary council file, <laughs> or so supplementary files, I have uh, the presentation she showed yesterday, but also I have other things. Um, so yeah, I can just kind of brief, we can brief everybody, but uh, everybody knows where Ramona Gardens is, right? We don't have an aerial view, but uh, so this, I don't know, should I talk about this Vince, right now? Well, just Okay, just give the report of what the, the committee came up with, the recommendation. Okay. So the recommendation of the committee, we recommend a letter of support for this uh, greening, um, what is it called, a green buffer solution uh, for, the health, for the immediate like health, safety and welfare of the people of Ramona Gardens. Um, the thing is we want what the people of Ramona Gardens want. So we will go into, we will become further involved in this, uh, getting involved with the community. Uh, this is a project, as I dig deeper on learning new things, but I guess it is partially funded. Uh, it's a, this, a non -pro a, a, grou a certain group was sort of chosen to design this and then the local CBO to do outreach was Legacy LA. Um, Ramona Gardens, you know, it was there before any of the freeways were there, but the 110, uh, it runs right, like right on the edge with the, um, what is the, the other busway there? The, there's a bus, bus, secret bus road too. So it's a lot of pollution. So this is a sort of, um, they're building this green tree buffer wall thing to block, you know, to improve the quality of life and health of the people. Um, some of the concerns were public private partnerships. Uh, why isn't the federal government, you know, HACLA providing uh, resources for the, you know, people that live there for their for e equity and, you know, some of the laws that we have for uh, civil rights and stuff. Uh, also, we talked about Hazard Park and uh, confusion about, uh, you know, a sort of uh, not having, or what is it? not feeling comfortable on your land or something. Uh, we talked about this being uh, associated and part of the LA River Revitalization Plan. Um, you know, those are some of our concerns, but the biggest thing is like the residents of Ramona Gardens pretty much have no agency. They don't have any representation. I, I'm pretty sure besides their resident uh, count, uh, res resident reps, the RAC, 
They're not part of Boyle Heights NC. They're not part of Lincoln Heights NC. So we want to look out for them because they're, you know, part of Lincoln Heights. And uh, yeah, we we care. So um, we, uh, you know, there weren't any Ramona Gardens residents there on the meeting last night, except for um, Jacqueline, who grew up there. Um, so Benny, you know, Benny grew up there. So Benny was talking. You know, there's a lot of stuff that's unresolved in Ramona Gardens, like the murals are get the famous, you know, the beautiful murals are coming down. Um, they need to, they need restoration, but they're getting torn down actually. Um, so uh, yeah, we need, uh, you know, we, we want to do, we want what's best for the people of Ramona Gardens and they're the ones that know what's best for themselves. So yeah, that's my summary. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, what, what else do we have? Uh, so if we, don't, if we don't have presenters, then we can move to a motion and the committee a motion to approve it, right? Yeah, we, or motion to approve. Yeah, but I think I have another supplementary file. I don't know what it is, but. I, if I'm under the correct impression, I think that oh, there it is. Um, the committee also voiced like under certain conditions that like it would be the community that's driving this and like yeah. ensure that it's like really for the community what happens is like you have like so it's just like the housing is key you know the rent relief right you have federal money coming down to the state and the state kind of hooks up with the county and they hire cbo's community-based organizations to do outreach to the people right so it's like legacy la was contracted by these people to sort of get you know uh, do outreach to the people of Ramona Gardens. Um, did the people of Ramona Gardens conceive of this project? Well, it doesn't say that on the paperwork. It says that the one, you know, this one group conceived of it. So uh, we want to make sure that the people of Ramona Gardens uh, have, you know, know that this is their park, or you know, it's not like a bait and switch or something, like with William Mead, you know. Uh, that, yeah, we're looking out. I think I think one of my only concerns is, is that the public didn't show, right? This was put on by somebody from the nonprofit. Yeah. Do we have, do we have anybody or any group in the public from Ramona Gardens that that supports it? Well, I have um, a, a couple of like younger friends there. Um, I could reach out to I, uh, Benny. Benny, are you on? You're the you're the chair, vice chair of the Planning and Lines Committee. Are you yes. On so yes, what, I'm here. Do you have anything to say about you know what? Let's uh, it's hard to reach out to the rack of, I you know, uh, can you hit up the rack this week? Um. Yeah. I can, yeah. I yeah I I can do that. Benny, I'd like to hear a perspective on it. My my perspective? Yes. I okay. Um, I think it's a, I think it's a really good idea. I mean, just the fact that it would serve this park, not this park would serve as a buffer to uh, counter the pollution coming from the cars on the ten freeway going both ways. Then you got the train that goes through there. And then you got this other, uh, you know, bus lane. There's a lot of traffic going back and forth. And so just the mere fact that it would serve as a, you know, the greenery would serve to counter that pollution to uh, protect the people, the community. By the way, it's a large community. You're talking about almost 700 units. And uh, remember, you need kids to live to rent a, a unit there. So imagine how many people are there. Um, so, I'm yeah. sorry, go ahead. Um, what was I gonna say? You need kids over there? Yeah, uh, Betty. Um, uh, I mean, I, so, uh, I grew up there, so I, I'm very familiar with the area and, and the my experience of like over two decades of living there. So I'm very familiar with, um, you know, what it's yeah. like. Benny, it's, so she was saying last night, it's federal land, but 
like Hackle is a city agency, right? Vince, it's like a public private thing. And then you have HUD, which is the federal agency. But my thing is this, if the Fed, you know, if it's a federal property, it's the um, response, you know, uh, the feds are really messing up here with uh, the equity measures, uh, you know, this, these new laws that, you know, um, the, first of all, <laughs> uh, the trees are kind of like a Band-Aid on a massive hemorrhage. <laughs> the thing is, you got the 10 freeway there, but when you look at it, yeah, when you look at the Google map, 10 freeway is not 15 lanes. What you're seeing is the El Monte busway is, is plopped right up against William Meade. It's right up against it. And uh, it's kind of an antiquated thing that they could probably tear down, but uh, they won't. And so then they put trees up instead. So yeah, there's bigger uh, injustices is that our neighborhood wasn't always so divided by these freeways because yeah, the freeways become giant, you know, holes in the ground. <laughs> Um, it's crazy, right? So uh, yeah, we have we have a uh, Gilbert's hand up. Yeah, oh, it, uh, I had some more on my oh. comment. Should I just wait? Yeah. Or? No, keep. Sorry, I was talking. But yeah, Benny, yeah. I'm I'm gonna stop. No, I was just gonna say that um, there's other benefits besides that. But like I said, on that mere reason alone, I would support. I would strongly support this. But like the presenter yesterday um, mentioned the swap meet that has been um, deemed uh, legal. So folks are now able to sell and that's a big opportunity for the, not just for the vendors but for the community to be able to um, you know, buy whatever they wanna buy there. Uh, and so this park, apparently it's gonna be, uh, you know, connected to that, to that um, swap meet. That's that, the swap meet was the the residents during COVID trying to share resources. That's what right. I mean. Yeah, and so many people benefit from it. It's and not HUD, just people from Ramona Gardens, but also from the neighboring community of of um, the Hazard Park area. But HUD shut it down, right? Yeah, it was. They always had problems, and finally they they got permission to to sell. And so, last I heard, they're they're now able to sell. So this park would support that swap meet. Um, if it's on federal, if it's on the same federal property, they would say, uh, no, not in our park either. So like, why do you need a park to be able to like, you know? So I'm just saying that it just would seem like a more friendly environment if there's a park right there. I mean, it's like, did it, it you know, I don't want to talk anymore. Hazard well, Park, all that stuff, yeah. but it's like, it's just sad, man. Well, last, the last thing I want to say is just that um, she also mentioned the fact that the only like park in, in the projects is, is a, an area of the projects called La Loma. And um, it's just been an area that's been neglected for the longest time. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's not like there's a park there already because that, that area of La Loma is um, not um, very conducive to like a park setting, it's just basically grass. But um, you know, there's been all kinds of litter there in the past, you know, such as broken bottles and what have you. So it's not really a, a park park per se. So for those reasons, I I strongly su support um, you know this this ideal. Danny, can you hit up the, get in contact with the rec because we're going to be continuing this dialogue as this goes on, but I. Uh, if you can get, get them to connect with HUD, so we can get HUD on the, on the line too, about like what's, you know, in the future. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. We have uh, Gil. Uh, well, my, my questions were wanted to be presented a long time ago. My hand has been up, but uh, uh, according to the agenda, I thought that we were gonna have a presentation by Legacy LA and Ramona Gardens, but uh, I guess we're not and I, and I, then I'm wondering uh, if it was ever formally open to comments uh, from the board. I mean, we seem to be going back and forth, but uh, that's not a very orderly manner. Uh, um, so this is a, you well, know, I would, I would suggest this, Sarah. Um, OK, so if, if we're not sure about it, right, we can yeah, so we, we, can, we can continue it because there's not a, a set date for this project. 
until until uh, Benny can get that information from HUD. Yeah, there's a couple. There's something in the pipeline right now of money money issue, but it's it's not a council file. It's like at the state level. So we will. Should I motion to just table this and then we'll continue the dialogue? Yeah, as long as there, there's no uh, uh, set date, right? There's not a deadline for anything. Uh, no. Okay, so let, let's let's table it to our next meeting. And since we've already talked about it and we're familiar, it should be one of the first items so we can just support it once Benny comes back with that information or how it, whatever the information comes back to take a stance on it. Yeah. And we should invite Jacqueline to present again to the general board. Yeah. We should, well, you know, we should invite, you know, uh, Ramona Gardens to present too. And, um, yeah, and uh, get everybody on board and HUD uh, on, in this, you know, whatever, answering some questions. Uh, Bill, right. hand up again. Bill? All right. Um, so I, uh, do I have to move to table it, Vince? Yeah, okay. just move to continue, not table. Just move to okay, continue move, to the next agenda. I move to continue that item to the next agenda. So um, we'll move real quick. Okay, so we're going to move to item number 8C, um, discussion and possible action on letter to city attorney, LA Mayor Garcetti, Film LA, CD14, LA Housing Department, HCID LA, regarding chronic commercial filming affecting rent-stabilized tenants living above mixed-use commercial storefronts in Lincoln Heights. Loss of tenants' right to quiet enjoyment, Civil Code uh, 1927, California Civil Code. A uh, nuisance to working class POC uh, communities who live in the, who are in the 99th percentile of economically or environmentally burdened communities, right? So uh, the, the air quality and all that. So uh, yeah, uh, Fernanda is our speaker and we have the supporting documents right here. Sure, so in the plug committee, uh, we invited the area representative from Film LA to speak about the procedures on how holding these entities accountable and what the protocols look like to like contact them in case that you do see someone violating their permits. Uh, FMLA was pretty defensive throughout the presentation, but they did conclude that they're here to serve us and provided his phone number um, to the community so that whenever you see something, call him and that he would investigate. Let me get that phone number for everyone. So the rep for this um, from Film LA for our area is Arturo Pina and his direct line is 213-977-8642. Um, specifically what the community impact statement is not just of this isolated event, but the fact that in Lincoln Heights and most of our communities, uh, we are consistently and chronically uh, being used for filming um, and with very little regulation and not possible to have an eye on every single permit and every single production company out here. A lot of the times, if not most of the times, they do violate their permits. Um, and specifically in our communities, we're met with harassment from production crews. Um, they perform in such a hazardous manner. Um, not only that, but they don't compensate our communities for the inconvenience while when they set up in more affluent communities like WeHo or Beverly Hills, I can guarantee you that they do outreach and monetarily compensate the residents that live there that are affected by filming. And they even relocate them to hotels at the expense of production companies. In fact, when there is street filming, production companies are supposed to have a budget allocated to compensate residents for inconvenience or any sort of, um, disturbance that they are causing. Um, but we don't see that happening in our communities here. Um, for example, uh, just a couple of blocks down from where I live, the TV show uh, Shameless from Fox TV was filmed here in Lincoln Heights. Um, and they would film there every single day for years. And I'm sure that nobody there got compensated for that inconvenience, even though our streets were blocked for most of the year for years. 
Um, and I have been reached out to by, you know, stakeholders, residents, neighbors, and everyone is really tired of this. Uh, we feel like we are definitely taking advantage of, we're not being respected. Um, we are a working class community. We have to move our cars every single day to accommodate these production film crews that don't really reciprocate any sort of respect to our communities. And so the community impact statement is proposing um, that we do make uh, compensation to our communities mandatory rather than leaving it at the discretion of production films. Uh, because when we questioned LA Film yesterday, what can you do to enforce that production companies uh, compensate our communities? Their answer was, we can't enforce that. That's a private agreement between production companies and residents. And that leaves a huge you know, discretion to basically they can do what they want, whether they want to compensate or not. Um, and the community impact statement also proposes that these film production companies pay a toll fee to the neighborhood councils every time they're filming in our streets. Because if you go to the LA Film website, they do promote public spaces for filming that you can reserve. Um, so we're promoting public spaces for profit. And oftentimes our communities are chosen for its aesthetics um, and you know they wanna gain everything without giving anything back. Um, and so yesterday the plug committee voted to approve the community impact statement. Vince, can you click on the community impact statement? It's below, below the, that one, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, so, uh, you know, can you just be straight up and tell, like, tell, tell everybody what happened that night? Fernandez. Sure. I, again, want to emphasize that this isn't about an it's isolated about incident. This is more about the fact that we face this every single time. But just to highlight an example of what happened last Friday, um, the production crew did violate their permit when all of our neighbors called LA Film. They confirmed that they were violating their permit, but they communicated that they were short staffed and that there was nothing they could really do to help us. Um, they were supposed to pick up and clean up by 10 p.m., but they didn't uh, leave until 2 a.m. They had the entrances to our buildings blocked with plexiglass, so we couldn't enter or exit our homes if we wanted to. Um, and when we approached them regarding the fact that they were violating their permits, uh, they weren't very nice to us back. In fact, they called the police on my neighbor um, because it just got so out of hand because everyone was waiting to go home on a weekday um and so it's just a lack of respect that our community faces constantly and it was a very um disheartening thing to realize that holding these entities accountable is not easy it's really hard and the fact that we had to get the neighborhood council involved to get someone from la film to call us back is not okay because most of our community members don't have any sort of neighborhood council uh, connection or any sort of connection to get a, a call back. Um, I spoke to several community members and they also confirmed that they've never received a response from LA Film. Um, and so I'm hoping that uh, this brings eyes to the fact that there really aren't any systems to hold uh, these people accountable or we need more people to you know, be a part of this. Cool. And I attached a council file. So there are, we, this is a letter. Uh, I wrote community impact statement, but uh, yeah, there are actual council files um, kind. I think they're still open and I've attached one, it may be close, but it's the Rocky Delgadillo one. So that if you click on that Rocky Delgadillo one, Film LA um, basically, uh, it's, uh, what is it? Um, Certain neighborhoods are sick of, sick of what's going on because homes are being, they're basically sound stages for rent, I guess on the west side. But um, this document here, uh, if you go to the end, it has all these letters like people wrote in about how they, you know, they can't take it anymore or whatever. But uh, uh, about, um, the, the recent council falls that we could amend this to apply to, there's one for um, Film LA, it's to make it mandatory that they're supposed to hire a, like 
a specific, whatever, a certain number of Latino, Hispanic, you know, POC, I think it's Latino people or indigenous brown. Uh, and it's kind of like the city's trying to kind of make up for something, you know? Um, so we could uh, make this thing go further, you know, if we want to. Um, but uh, yeah, so it, it, yeah, there's a lot that a lot on the record about what's going on, especially with uh, racism and police involved. So this one, so we can make the motion on this one. The motion is to approve the letter. Uh, the, no, the community impact statement, correct? It's a community impact statement. It's it doesn't have a council file attached, or you know, I don't like to call things that. Whatever. Okay. So the letter. <laughs> To approve the letter, and this letter will be going to Film LA, and who else? City Attorney, uh, Mayor, because the mayor started the whole film initiative, you know. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, Mayor, City Attorney, HCID, because of the rent control. Um, and then, um, God, uh, I forget the other one, Film LA. Yeah. Okay, so I'll make the motion to approve the letter to go to the uh, Film LA agency, to the no mayor. Problem. Okay, Ben. Ben seconds. All right. Uh, we... Board member comment. Yeah, board member comment. Mm -hmm. uh, Deanna. Yeah, I just want to make a comment about how um, they're also filming something like on my block, and it has the traffic has gotten so clogged. It's insane. Like I just saw, I just see a but like a bunch of these huge white or black trucks just like driving past. I mean, I haven't interacted with them at all. They're nice, but like we already, it's known that we already have a traffic problem. And even my classmates have commented on it. They're like, the traffic's gotten even worse. And like, yeah, um, what like sometimes when my dad he um he drives a car out to like pick me up or something, he drives back. Like he drives back, and guess what? The spot's taken. We have to park somewhere else, even though, I mean, it's our parking spot. And, like, isn't that something we should be compensated for? But I haven't heard anything about compensation. All I see is a notice. But even then, that's only, like, past a certain house on my block. I haven't seen one at my house, like, a flyer of what they're filming at all. Yeah, exactly. Thanks, Juliana. Uh, Gil? Yes, uh, I, I was looking at the letter and everything else like that. And this is something I think that uh, would affect uh, anybody in any, in, in any neighborhood, right? The, the filming and everything else like that. So uh, the, the note saying that uh, quite an enjoyment to, to a working class, uh, uh, that's like uh, we're asking for something s uh, special. I, I, I don't think that needs to be in there. It's just that it's uh, uh, enjoyment of, of, of the public. I mean, the general public. So. Uh, uh, all right, Gil, yeah, these are civil rights. See, the city has its own uh, law, constitution or its own laws with uh, civil rights, I guess it thinks. But uh, this is, uh, if it's, it's public property uh, and it's a public private partnership with this entity, nonprofit, um, to help the film industry or whatever. But uh, rent controlled apartments above commercial storefronts that are being rented out on the side for extra money. Uh, as, a, as a tenant, you have rights according to California Civil Code, but also according to the Federal Housing, uh, Federal Ho housing Act. Uh, yeah, and then also your basic civil rights and ADA stuff. So the city's saying, oh, it's not that bad. Or, eh, blah, 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 blah. Basically, if it violates your civil rights, you, uh, you know, you have uh, options above the city. Gail, if I may, um, I understand your comment. I think what the wording in this statement is trying to highlight is the difference in um, attitudes that our communities are given from production companies versus more affluent communities. Um, and specifically that our communities are specifically working class communities. And so um, we're affected by all of this nuisance without ever being compensated for it when we know that other communities are being compensated for this. Gil? 
Do you know that for a fact that other communities uh, are being compensated or do you think that they're taking advantage of, of the situation here? Is that what you're referring to? Well, I know that production companies, because I do have friends that work in that field, they do have a budget specifically allocated to compensate residents for the inconvenience. And I do know people that live in more affluent communities and they're always compensated for it. Um, and there are a lot of articles online about how LA film, uh, the filming in Los Angeles is just out of hand and how mostly communities of color aren't ever compensated um, by production companies. Right. Okay, uh, Richard Ortiz. Thank you. I just wanted to say, I noticed towards the end of that meeting we had, I believe it was about these same topics. I heard a, I believe I heard like a, inappropriate comment. Um, I gotta go back and check it, check it out. It was just, I don't know, I, I, it, it, was, it was, it got to me, I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Richard. And I, I'll just close, because I don't see anybody else's hand up and I can't pick up mine. Look, I work, I work, oh, Melanie, let Melanie go. Sorry, Chente, I'll be quick. No, no, yeah, sorry. there is a, they do have money for it. Uh, neighborhoods are compensated. Um, and not just like the houses that they're filming at, that's standard. Um, and if, from what I understand, like compensation can be demanded. And typically what happens is the neighborhood like complaining or bringing up issue. And then, you know, the location manager making sure there's compensation. But when you are in a community like ours, where no one wants to cause a problem or feel like they can't you know, bring up issues, it really creates a lot of inequity for that kind of situation. So that is why, you know, you do have a situation where more affluent neighborhoods who feel more comfortable being vocal about these sorts of things end up getting compensated. And, you know, besides the fact that the kind of exploitation of this ghetto hood and using that for a uh, film to turn a profit, um, that on top of, you know, us being easily exploited um, needs to be addressed. All right. Yeah. Bill, you have a last word. Uh, as if uh, really, it's if it's something that's uh, prevalent and, and and rampant and everything else like that, I I would think that uh, uh, perhaps uh, the neighborhood council could uh, uh, have a person that uh, monitors these things, and uh, uh, you know, when when the permit is coming, it has to come. Uh, we have to be notified, and uh, and. Uh, you know everything done in uh, in, in the, the way that the manner that should be done uh if it comes rapid thank that's you a, that's a good point you know because mm. i was thinking the same thing um uh, i went on hackler's uh website who owns or runs uh ramona gardens and i wanted to know what their film policy was um and they have a very strict film policy if you want to go film in any of the uh housing projects or uh development uh, and, and one of them is that it's run by the people that live there and you're not allowed to block their doors or operate after a certain time and you have to pay a fee and, but it's run by the, um, the governing agency, the res, the RAC, the resident agency. And, uh, I feel that those rules should apply to Lincoln Heights too. The council should have more jurisdiction or we should have, instead of the police as the representative for film LA, <laughs> we don't need... You know that's 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 threatening to our community. Um, well, that, that's part of that's part of what I was going to mention in the comment is that when you look at Film LA, Film LA is the middle person between the city and the the public, right? But Film LA is a five hundred one c three. They're not really you can't hold them accountable because they're a nonprofit. They're they're a corporation, mm -hmm. and that's how they get out of having communication from city to the actual resident, right? So one of the things that we can uh, draft up is a community guideline sheet to hand the uh, Film LA. And for example, if you're within a radius of X amount of feet, let's say 300 feet of your film zone, and you need to compensate because you're going to be blocking, anything can matter what, what disrupts your life. Having to wait during a shoot, can't come down your stairs. That, that is all messing your day up, right? 
The other thing that they've seen, and I've seen both sides of this, right? And I've been dealing with the film industry even before Film LA came in. They've always compensated you if they're going to film at night. Sometimes they'll offer you a hotel. If they were going to take your parking spot or they needed it, they would always offer about $1,500. If they needed the front of your house or something, we've gotten as much as $4,500. They're not paying anybody here. And so these budgets are specifically put in at all times in their budgets because they don't ever know, and their discretionary fund is pretty thick because they don't know when they're going to come against these costs. Now, the difference is on the West side, I was never, I never had to go out and ask. I was always approached kindly by Film LA saying, sorry for the inconvenience, um, but we have, you know, compensation for you. And um, if you need parking, we actually have a parking spot where we can tram you from there because we don't want to cause any inconvenience. Now, back on the east side, they don't do that. We don't, we have never gotten any one of our properties on the east side. It's always just been, you know, kind of like stay quiet. Hopefully they don't find out. So I do think that this letter is going to be good to send out, but I think we should follow up with our own kind of guidelines, like Sarah mentioned and Gil mentioned, on what we want for our neighborhood and what we think compensation should be for them, you know? And get a lot of public input on it, because I'm pretty sure everyone has had some type of experience with this. It should also follow the new, uh, the, the new uh, law about, uh, what is it, oh, uh, the uh, uh, equity thing. Um, what is it, AFFH? Uh, any government or state funded agency or it, it doesn't have to do with housing, but it's kind of like the Fair Housing Act. Um, anything that uh, comes into communities and it doesn't um, um, consider, you know, it, it's like language justice or if they discriminate or whatever and they don't equitably like disperse funds or resources or whatever, it's a, a violation of your rights. And if they don't accommodate you, it, for instance, with us being in the 99th percentile of environmentally burdened communities, that's actually um, some of the most solid data out there that dictates what goes on in cities with equity. So mm -hmm. trucks posted up burning fuel generators outside your window actually, you know, could kill, you know, kills kids. And that's real. So, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I like this, uh, us writing a sort of um, proclamation or ordinance or whatever. So we yeah. have, the, this was board member comment. I don't see any more. We should open it up to public and then vote. Yeah, all right. If there's anybody in the public that wishes to make a comment, you can do so by pushing star nine or raising the little yellow hand. I'm not seeing any. Oh. We're gonna move on. Amanda? Oh, one, hold on one, one second. We have Jesse. Give me one oh, second. Jesse. <clears throat> okay, Jesse, please state your name for the record. Hi, it's just Jess. Oh, Jess. <laughs> Sorry. Hi, Hi everybody. Uh, I just wanted to um, just make a comment that here on East Lake we had filming going on maybe about two months ago, and uh, we're lucky to have a network of elder women that really hold it down here, like very little uh, techie um, tech knowledge, but the news travels fast. And um, there, were, there were folks that um, had lights on all night long, uh, blaring into their bedrooms, um, elders. And so one of uh, my neighbors, uh, an elder's daughter, uh, we stay in touch and, uh, you know, they were, not only was the film um, romanticizing or glamorizing gang life, I mean, we have shootings here and we have, like, there's a real concern here for, like, just why can't we have more, you know, of, of the arts and, and opportunities for our youth. And so there was just a lot of, there was, it was just really problematic, but eventually we found out that they were giving out compensation. So our goal was to let neighbors know to, you know, we passed the number of, of the, the dude that was um, taking people's information and trying to get as many people compensated. Uh, but you're right. I, I think one of you mentioned that, you know, a lot of folks aren't trying to um, create any tension, especially right now. Um, so I am seeing a lot of filming going on. It's so inconvenient. They take up so much space here in East Lake, on East Lake, up here by Ella Park. 
there's already so much tension around parking that um, it, it really was really, really annoying and frustrating. So I'm, I'm glad that you're all having these discussions and really looking out for, for our youth and our elders. Um, you know, parking hella far is, is super inconvenient. So I'm not sure if this is like, I, you know, I'm not sure how to go about um, making this go away or <laughs> making it better, but I'm glad that there's a discussion around it because it was just, it was really annoying. So just wanted to make that comment. I'm, I'm behind what Sarah and Fernanda are, are bringing up. Um, yeah, I've lived here in Lincoln Heights for over 10 years now. Thank you for that. Yeah, you know, I had somebody talk to me about that shoot. You know, they uh, basically it's like a police state on your street. They were trying to come up their street and they were uh, almost hit, by, you know, the cop got in their face. And uh, yeah, it was like really bad. They had to get to work and that's their street and they're trying to move their car. And it was almost like an altercation. But um, yeah, the police thing is kind of strange, but uh, I mean, not strange, but traumatic and um, not right uh, in our neighborhood. And uh, they don't, um, I'm hearing all these high numbers for comp compensation, but uh, basically I've never been compensated. And the only person I know, they got like $200 because they ran a bunch of extension cords through their porch. But uh, I don't know how you get 4,500 bucks, but let me know later. <laughs> um, all right, so um, uh, any more we public vote, comments? We move to the vote. We don't have any more public comments. All right, so we're gonna so we'll move to a vote right now to uh, the motion again to approve the letter, Vince? The letter is to approve the letter to the uh, city attorney, Film LA, LH, L A H D H C I D, oh. on a commercial filming affecting rent stabilization tenants living above mixed use commercial storefronts in Lincoln Heights. And oh. we have a second and a motion, and now we just need a vote. We took a yeah. board comment and public comment already. Uh, we'll, uh, I guess this secretary. Right. We'll go ahead and take it for a vote, Sarah. Yes. Ben? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Fernanda? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Benny Madera? Yes. Didia? Yes. Joanna? Yes. Diana? Yes. Melanie? Yes. Diego? Yes. Richard? Good mom. Gil? Steve? Yes. Selena? Yes. Esmeralda? Yes. And Gil, one more time? Yes. It's unanimous. Motion carries. Motion carries. Ooh, okay. Thank you, Fernanda. Um, Vince, can you pull up the agenda? We're running out of time here. So let me see if I can uh, omit some items. I have, a, we're on item D right now. Oh, on, uh, oh yeah, so D. Um, hey, uh, Diego, do you want to present this item? <laughs> uh, sure, I mean, I don't have much to say because I don't think even uh, CD1 has had much to report to me. Um, but, uh, so I, I believe this is an item that came up a few months ago, uh, for the neighborhood council, um, which was prompted because the land where the, uh, KISS radio tower, which, you know, we all know where that is. It's that's the, the summit of flat top. Um, there was a motion made by, uh, uh, council district, uh, one representative, uh, here said the old. Uh, back in 2017 or 2018 about uh, asking uh, the city about, you know, the, the lease of, of that radio tower property, um, because I believe Hollenbeck, uh, the Hollenbeck division of LAPD uses it for their communications. Uh, and so the city still leases it for that purpose. Um, so and essentially the motion is to figure out whether the city wants to renew the lease, you know, what to do with the property, just to figure out like, you know, what, what, what the decisions 
that could be made on behalf of that property are. And I believe it expires on March 20 of this year. Uh, so I, uh, Sarah prompted it, uh, and I guess I've been corresponding with CD1 just to figure out what any news is in regards to that, because the motion will expire this month. And so we're really interested in seeing, you know, what the potential is in regards to, you know, potentially purchasing it. Uh, you know, are they going to renew the lease? Like what, what is going to happen with that property? Um, and so... Uh, the only thing that I've heard from CD1 is that they requested a uh, report from the Department of Rec and Parks uh, to see what the alternatives could be. But I, I, I don't think I've, I've he I haven't heard about anything else in regards to that. I'm not entirely sure Rec and Parks even knows what's going on with that property, um, given that they, they haven't been involved. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, all I, that's all the information I have. I don't know if you have any anything else to share, Sarah, on this front. I just have some numbers. Vince, could you pull up the uh, the council file? Uh, his motion. I, I kind of uh, consolidated the council file with the general service division and the chief chief administrative officer. Blah blah blah. So, um, do do do. Where's this? It, no, but that's the that's the document saying it's uh, positive under AB five two. Um, Mark uh, the North is true. Uh, can you X out of that? Oh, it's called C F blah blah item eight D eight D. Okay, stop. Uh, it's not. It's not that one. It's 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 the oh, eh. that. Oh, go up. No. Wait, okay. So uh, where is it? Oh yeah, that one, motion. The motion? Yeah, the motion, hit the motion. No, it's below the, that's the, that's the sis. It's below the motion, yeah, yeah. So that's his motion. So on the, on the this uh, Mount Olympus or the radio tower or whatever, uh, that property was purchased in 1961 by Foursquare Church so they could run, transmit the radio signal uh, for the broadcast. Um, they, so, they went to sell it in 20, around 2017, uh, they were gonna build a bunch of houses there. And yeah, so the, the ball got rolling to save Flat Top as a park, right? And this was supposed to be the crown jewel of Flat Top, but uh, there were some backdoor deals and it was sold to a private party for 1.6 million. And it has a couple houses on it and a bunch of radio uh, transmitters. So city, you know, all the, the city, the council members knew about this. Everybody knew about this property. And, uh, but the thing is, uh, Hollenbeck LAPD didn't, didn't know. And basically they had uh, been getting free rent at that site for their radio transmitters for the past 50 years. So, uh, so what happened was the new owner hit up the city and said, hey, uh, you're gonna have to start paying, paying to rent. You know, you're gonna have to pay a lease to have these antennas here, you know? And the city did the research in these documents and said, oh, we, well, there's not another suitable site, you know, that can transmit to Hollenbeck uh, well enough or whatever, and it will cost more than the whole property. So um, basically the new owner, the city's paying this new owner $97,000 a year for the privilege of, you know, to lease, to put these antennas there. And meanwhile, the current owner is running it for like giant concerts and parties and, um, I was told that uh, somebody climbed one of the towers and the lights went out, you know, and basically, you know, helic that's like a helicopter should crash into them or whatever. But the thing is, it's like the city needs to make a decision. It's like, uh, you know, it protects the health, the safety of the people to, you know, if the antennas go down, we're screwed. But also it's that, why is the city, you know, they're paying up $97,000 a year taxpayer money on, on a property they could have bought, but they weren't paying attention. So, it's about uh, eminent domain for what it's actually you, you know, supposed to do, I think. Uh, it's about the, mo the community impact statement is um, asking the city to uh, eminent do the domain for the benefit of the public and the yeah, safety of the public. What was the recommendation of Pluck? Uh, to approve the uh, community impact statement. Um, so, I'll say this, I I'd like to make the motion to approve 
the community impact statement. Let me just go back to the agenda. Give me one second. We have to try to get it to council. No second. Okay, the motion I'm making is to approve the, the community impact statement for council file 171038, which is the 1050 Montecito Drive, KISS Radio Tower, and Ben seconds. I would open it up to a board member comment and we think we have one. Diego. Yeah, sorry, I forgot to mention a few things. Um, uh, so, oh gosh, what was I gonna say? Well, so uh, I did some inquiry uh, like a few months ago about the potential for purchasing that property. The landlord of the property that currently owns it, uh, I think it gave uh, an asking price of over $5 million, um, which is absolutely prohibitive. Like that is just way more than the market rate. Uh, and so public money will not <laughs> suffice if, they, if they're set on the asking price. The other thing too was CD1, the representative that I talked to said that uh, he has been doing outreach with uh, the Montecito Heights Homeowners Association and will keep them posted in regards to any updates. And so I have asked the CD1 rep to also keep in mind that the property also lies within the Lincoln Heights Neighborhood Council boundaries and that they should also be keeping us posted on any, on any news regarding this property. So uh, I will keep, I, I will, I will keep, you know, corresponding with them and making sure that that happens because uh, I feel like, uh, I feel like Lincoln Heights is entitled to, to knowing what's going on with, with uh, a parcel of flat top that is, you know, as Sarah mentioned, really the crowning jewel of, of, of that area. So. Yeah, KISS oh. FM, there are, Jingle was a KISS FM in Lincoln Heights, California, you know, not, you know, it's a, uh, yeah, the boundaries are kind of that's that's uh in our community too and yeah uh i don't see any more uh board member comments cool uh public comments uh anybody from the anybody, public? Yeah. anybody in the public that wishes to make a comment you can push star nine or use the little hand icon i don't see any all right so i guess we're gonna move for a vote or go for a vote um so the motion is to approve the community impact statement, which is basically just telling you what I said before about the money and the safety um, and future uh, social uh, environmental justice. Uh, yeah, so uh, Secretary Sanchez, roll call please. Sarah? Uh, yes. Ben? Yeah. Vincent? Yes. Fernanda, yes. Nancy? Yes. Benny? Yes. Joanna? Yes. Diana? Yes. Melanie? Yes, yes. Diego? Yes. Richard? Wow. Gil? Yes. Steve? Yes. Selena? Yes. Esmeralda? Yes. It's unanimous motion carries. Uh, Didia also votes yes. I didn't hear my name called. Didia. Thank you, Didia. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, motion carries. Thank you, everybody. All right. Um, let me see. Vince, can you scroll up the agenda? My desktop jammed. Oh, wait, I got it. Okay, so. We are at, okay, so uh, let me just see real quick. Do we have the MERs, uh, Vince? Vince? Okay, well, I just wanna see if I should just reorder anything on the agenda. I don't hear what? Vince. Vince, yeah. do you have the, the monthly expenditure reports for item 10 or no? Yes, I do. I have it. For, the only one we need was for February. So you just, we're just gonna do one of those, right? Just one. Rules and bylaws. Okay, so we have these rules and bylaws. Hey, Ben Wadsworth and Vince, it, uh, the rules committee, is it? Uh, we have the deadline for that, right? We have to get them approved by a certain deadline, but we don't right. even have enough board members to approve the bylaws, but we could do the standing rules, right? We can do the standing rules uh, at any time. That's, that's not covered by that. Sure. Okay. Um, all right. So can I table, can I table, uh, should, can I table the rules and bylaws? 
We we sure, can. Because we can't act on the bylaws. We don't have anything. Yeah, we need to we need to try to get the the amount for the bylaws so we can we can continue the bylaws and standing rules so we can do them all at once. Yeah. Okay. And, but we have to do them. Um, there may be a special meeting just so board members know. It might be the only item on there, mm -hmm. but it, we have to do it before April fifteenth. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We, we have time. All right. Cool. So then we'll just keep rolling then. Um, and yeah. Okay. So item nine a. It's in pretty much an announcement. Uh, Fernanda. We have the floor. Uh, hey, uh, the Tenants' Rights Committee, item number nine. Yes, again, <laughs> there is a housing clinic this Saturday um, at Altura Street, the Lincoln Heights Youth Center. Um, there, two of the nonprofits will be helping folks apply for the Housing is Key Rent Relief Program. Uh, or if you've already applied and they're requesting for supplemental documentation, they will help you upload it onto the portal. Um, but in order to get their help, you do have to register and the website to RSVP is right there on the left hand corner. Um, they also have a phone number you can call uh, to reserve um, a time slot for yourself and that phone number is 323. 238-5326. Um, it's from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. It'll be outside in the parking lot. Um, otherwise, uh, the deadline for this program is March 31st. Um, so just make sure to get your applications in before March 31st in order to be considered for the rent relief program or any utility bill um, debt that you have as well. Yeah. So. Vince, I have the whole paper application uh, on the thing, just if anybody wants to check it out. But yeah, Stay House LA is this city county thing uh, offering sort of uh, legal uh, aid, legal advice, and then they have a link to the actual state level money. That state site is housing.ca.gov, otherwise known as housing is key. Um, so uh, yeah, you could go to that site. That's where you sign up. And all you need to show for proof of income, uh, it's your taxes, or you can show um, your Medi-Cal card that you qualify for Medi-Cal, uh, uh, CalFresh, um, or, any of that, or any of that. So it's kind right. of easy. And um, yeah, so uh, I, you know, also it provides up to 15 months back rent, back to 2020, and then all the way up to March 31st. And then it covers all your utilities, could be thousands of bucks. But it also covers mortgage too. So it's for, you know, if you have a house and you can't, and you've missed mortgage payments, you can get compensated for that. And, you know, you just sign up because I think they're going to extend it anyway. If, you know, you've, Fear that you may not have income in the next couple of months. Um, once they cut it off, they cut it off. And uh, yeah, cool. Sorry, yes. Bernie. We have uh, Gil because I know there's no action on this item, but Gil. Uh, yes, uh, our there was some reference that we're gonna, you're going to be able to have flyers available. Is that uh, flyers? Oh, yeah. Uh, when, where, when, and where can we get those so we can distribute them in our areas? Um, I have been putting some up in the area. Um, if you'd like to pick some up or I can drop some off, um, I'm more than happy to do that. Okay, well, uh, uh, send me an email with your address and everything else, and I can go get some. I, I want to hand some out. Perfect. Thank you, Gil. Yeah, so like basically, we, we got the mayor came to us, okay? The mayor wants to. What it's the mayor's uh, housing clinic in like you know he's doing it for Lincoln Heights, that's what they told us, and uh, the CBOs or there's about six groups. It's uh, Jimmy Gomez is sending a person, uh, the assembly woman is sending a person, and then it's like Eastside Leeds, ACCE Action, you know some legal aid groups, um, Barrio Action maybe, um, but uh, yeah uh, that outreach by you know the way that it all worked out uh it wasn't you know the outreach was more internet based and i i told them that uh you know we need street level stuff we need flyers in english spanish and chinese and 
yeah, there's not much time left. And uh, yeah, people need to sign up. We have Benny. Uh, no, yeah, yeah, I just wanted to echo what, what's been said already about like, this is really urgent. Like we, we need all hands on deck for this and stuff. The deadline is fast approaching and uh, we really need to take advantage of these resources and these folks that are going to be coming to the community to help. I mean, people can sign up on their own. It's if you have a computer or whatever. So I think they're going to be helping people like take a photo of their thing and upload it, but there's they're not going to have a million slots either. So we could make a plan in the next week to, you know, do some street level outreach. If outreach, if outreach wants to do that. Yeah, because I, I had inquired if like our booth can also do applications and they told me that we couldn't. Um, so I'm also thinking that, you know, on the neighborhood council level, if we could just put on our own thing and help people apply before the March 31st deadline. Um, I did work for Housing is Key for a few months, as well as with the LA County Rent Relief Program. So I am very familiar with the application and I I mean, it was my job to help people apply for this as well. Um, so, I mean, I've been helping my neighbors and stuff like that, but um, if anyone wants to help me out <laughs> with organizing our own um, little setup clinic to help the community, like, please let me know. Um, and shoot me an email and we can get the ball rolling. I'll help you, Fernanda. It's Nancy. Thank you, Nancy. I'll help <laughs> you. Okay. okay. And here I got you. All right. Uh, thank you, Fernanda. And everybody, yeah, we have the flyers on our uh, website as the supporting documents. All right, so now we will move on to uh, 10 Budget Committee. Uh, Vince, yeah, uh, with A, I, we can uh, briefly announce yeah. it. Again. The, we have the MPD open call for anybody that wants to have application. We've gotten a few, and I'm, I'm in communication with some. Uh, some of the MPG applications to get the documents ready and everything, but we're open and we'll, we'll soon have uh, possibly like next month, put a few on uh, for discussion, but we're waiting to see which ones are approved with all the documentation um, to try to start giving out our, the MPG. And uh, so it's open up to anybody with the 501c3, you must have one. Uh, we do do co-sponsorship, but, or a fiscal agent but the fiscal agent must have its paperwork up to date. So that's for the MPG. Um, we don't need to do the MER for uh, December okay. or January. Mm -hmm. So today we only have the MER for February, which I'm going to bring up. And just to remind everyone, this is a funding item. So we need everyone to uh, be ready to vote on this because we have to go name by name. Um, currently, right now, our beginning balance was $39,140.90. At the time, we had only spent $650. Um, right now, we have our public storage that was uh, $325. Uh, That's our, our, uh, our bill. That's kind of high. And then we have no outstanding uh, budget right now. So we're, we're doing pretty good. Our available net as of, as of February is uh, $38,490.90. So one of the things that we're also gonna be putting on that we've gotten recommendations is to start building up the items that we will need to do outreach. So outreach, if you're listening, um, we need ideas for like, you know, canopies so you can set up, your tables that we can use in multiple different events. So we probably don't need that much tables and chairs but something that, you know, a tablecloth, something you can come up with that we can use so we can actually create a project with it, right? So we're gonna be looking for that and look for an email because I'll be sending it to all the, all the committees that are responsible for those things. And I did get an email from Joanna with like maybe getting a, a projector and a screen. So all these things are gonna be important to our outreach because we can use them in different aspects of educating the public, but even when we're out openly in public, we'll be having them. So this is our February. So that's what we'll be voting on for the MER. And so do I have a motion to approve the February MER? So moved. Okay, Ben motions and we need a second. Mr. Second. 
Richard Ortiz seconds. Okay, uh, is there any board comment? Uh, Vince, I have a comment. Yes. All right, so uh, yeah, we have the storage. Uh, we have to go through the storage with Don, so we still have to do that, and we pay yeah. a lot for that storage. But, you know, I am a nerd, and I went through the MERs, you know, as many as I could find online of the past, right? Mm -hmm. So I've discovered some things, right? Like we have some sort of filing cabinet at the senior center for storage. I don't know what's in there, but also certain tech technologies were acquired, like PA system and all that, microphones. So uh, I guess I could ask Jose, like, you know, what is the, is there like a, after a couple years, is your PA, PA like just garb, like uh, the accountability of um, whatever, what, where are our tents and chairs of two years ago? What happened to them? Is it like- We're gonna go through like forensic accounting to go through I, all of it and- I'll just like, I mean, Jose's still on the meeting. But I, I don't know, man. Um, anyway, that's, we don't have to ask stupid questions. But, uh, uh, yeah. Hey, sir. Uh, yeah, in regards to missing like inventory from previously, then uh, typically they'll, those get reported. Uh, uh, believe the process would be to do like a police report to like you know just note down what was missing or what's but what been what been missing or what got lost. Uh, there's an there's an actual inventory that Don has like for instance we have our old offices which is like a shared space which people could be using assets you know or things uh, but um, I just want to actually. There was an inventory that was done, I believe, 2018, or as, as we were transitioning the funding uh, division, the neighborhood council funding division from the neighborhood department to the city clerk's office around that time is that when the department made the, the went out, worked with the neighborhood councils to do an inventory of, of the equipment, especially uh, that they met the criteria that, that we need to follow, mm -hmm. uh, which then was provided to the neighborhood council for the neighborhood council to approve and submit to the city clerk. Uh, but then afterwards, city clerk has kept track of any inventory from the neighborhood council at that point uh, of, from the expenses that it has throughout the fiscal years. Okay. So just, just one thing, Jose, can you get me that last report that we had? Uh, for the inventory, yeah, I can check with uh, Monica and, okay. and see what, what the inventory reports are, are so far uh, uh, that the, the city clerk might have on record. Uh, okay. Yeah, if you can just get that to us and then I can go over it with Sarah and then set a time up when we do our inventory. But like Sarah says, there are things missing. One, we have to get a list, Sarah, together to figure it all out. But really, let's let's get the storage unit straightened first, and then we'll go from there. Yeah, we got our storage unit. And, you know, it was basically it was being shared with people. You know, uh, our stuff might be all over the place, and I don't know if you just like charge it to the game, or if you, we have to go on a recon mission and get it back. You know what I mean? No, no, and that'll be the process. Mm -hmm. We have to go in, ask first, and then uh, if nothing's there, refer back to the city. It's hard because I know it, you know, filing the report and all that. You have it was it taken or is it misplaced or <laughs> didn't keep track of it. Uh, in, in that process, I'll uh, just like you no, know, we'll check with Monica too. Like you know, if, if stuff went got lost or not not there anymore, then what what the protocol would be. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'll open it up to public comment. If anybody has public comment on the MER for February, 2022. I don't see any, I'm gonna close public comment. Okay, we're gonna go down for the vote. Okay, Sarah? Yes. Oops, sorry. Ben? Yes. Give me one second, sorry about that. <laughs> That's my <laughs> Fernanda? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Nancy? Nancy? Yes. Thank you. Benny? Yes. Thank you. Didia? Didia? 
Is she still on the line? Okay, I'll come back. Uh, Joanna? Joanna? Okay, Annalie is absent. Melanie? Yes. Okay, thank you. Esmeralda? Yes. Thank you. Diego? Yes. Thank you. Richard Ortiz? Oh. There we go. Gil? Yes. Thank you. Steve? Yes. Thank you. Selena? Yes. Thank you. And Deanna? Because I'm 18, I'm eligible, right? So yes. Okay. So. Okay, I'm just going to go back. Uh, Joanna? I don't know if she's still in. Let me just double check. So I don't call. Okay, I don't see her in, so I'm going to mark her absent. She may be having reception issues. Okay, just for right now on this vote. And then uh, Didia, I don't see her either in the room. And she has an uh, excuse uh, to leave early. Okay, <laughs> so let me just mark them as absent. Okay. Okay, motion carries. Motion carries. Yeah. Cool. So we're going to move on to the next item. Um, that would be. So we're going to uh, postpone, what is it? Move the bylaws to the next meeting. Continue to the next meeting. Continue bylaws. to the next meeting, not move. Okay. Uh, did it, did it. Okay, so skipping the rules and bylaws. Right? Okay, so executive committee, uh, I'm going to have to skip A. I'm, I'm sorry about that. We'll have it at the next meeting. And then B is you know the mandatory announcement. We have eight vacancies. And I have to announce them, so I will right now. We have um, two business representative seats. One uh, seat ends in 2025 and one seat ends in 2023. An area one rep at large seat, it ends in 2023. An area two rep resident, resident seat, it ends in 2023. An area three rep at large seat ends in 2023. And an area three rep resident seat ends in 2025. An area four rep resident 2023 and then an area six representative resident it ends in 2023 and uh we have the maps and everything uh as supporting documents are in our bylaws um and uh do we have any applications uh secretary sanchez or vince no, no. Okay. we haven't received any applications so uh we don't have to uh go to those next items right um Correct. Okay, and then, yeah, so that's that. And then we will move to item 13, non-agenda public comment. If there's anybody from the public, like I always do, last minute, uh, your last chance, <laughs> uh, press star nine and raise your hand to speak uh, for two minutes. I don't see any. All right, so uh, final one, uh, adjournment. Right? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Yeah, a second. All right. Thirded. All those in favor say aye. 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 We don't have no opposition for the record. No abstentions. The meeting officially ends at 8-12. Thank you everyone in the public and board members from holding on. It's always greatly appreciated. All right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, children. Bye, take care. In the background with that red oh, Selena. Bye.